first thing in the morning, we decided to take a look out at the uh, view that we had been enjoying and taking in last night over dinner. And it turns out that two out of four of the things that we thought were houses are actually other houseboats. It's pretty amazing how big, how complicated, how ornate these things get. Easily at least four rooms right there, four families on that one. These houseboats are amazing. They're just unbelievable. They're so luxurious, well furnished. Just a great way to enjoy the backwaters. That one was pimping. Oh, and in the water here, well, they've got water snakes. It was cool to watch them batten down the hatches and then open it all back up this morning because when we got up there was one window that we could see out of and everything else was tarped off but now the whole thing is wide open and it's just beautiful it's like a big moving veranda i love it now that we've had our morning tea we seem to be on our way back to uh, the port where we picked up our boat last night. The place that we got last night's dinner looks even more colorful and adorable in the day. The prawns were delicious! Hi. <laughs> so from my understanding, a houseboat seems to literally be like a Muskoka cottage that floats. So it's this, you know, quaint little house, has a room, has a kitchen, has a bathroom, has a gorgeous patio space, and a roof over the entire thing, and it just floats along the backwaters. And it's great because they all seem to follow a similar model. You see the other houseboats around here. Again, the same thing, big home with a front porch. <laughs> This one right here has four bedrooms, and the one behind it has six bedrooms and a conference center. I've been doing some work with the Port Credit Yacht Club this year, and uh, being out on this boat, it makes me wonder what would happen if someone were to roll up in a houseboat to a Lake Ontario Yacht Club. I don't even know if there'd be space for this bad boy. But one day somebody's got to do that. It might just be me. Breakfast is served. A feast! The French weren't in India for very long. And so you don't see a whole lot of French culture as you go through India, but the one thing you do see is the word pancake. And what they mean is crepe. And in this case, thank goodness for the French. So this is apparently a typical Carolan breakfast. It's a pancake, and inside they have coconut, cardamom, cashew nut, and cumin. Sounds delicious. Let's try it. That's quite good, actually. You can really taste the coconut. It's predominantly coconut, I think. Behind me is the finish line for what's essentially an enormous boat race. Basically, the snake boat races in Kerala are a big thing. They kind of make dragon boats look a bit more like drake boats because you can put over a hundred people on this boat, and it is enormous. <laughs>
be fun. <laughs> Ooh, this one has two floors. Is that part safe to step on? So this is our third boat we're walking through. <laughs> oh, looks like solid ground. All right. All right, three boats later. We're on solid ground. It's quite a hike. to say goodbye to our houseboat. It was excellent, excellent experience being on there. But we are currently en route to Fort Kochi and I'm sure that is going to be another fantastic Carolyn experience to have. So we managed to find a place called Greenix Village. Not Greenwich Village, Greenix Village. And when you hear that a hotel is called a village, um, it kind of just sounds like a kitschy name, but this place is literally a village. Check it out. So past the welcoming naked statue, we have a huge long hallway here with a place that's actually featured in the Lonely Planet, Coffee Beans, which is very cute, but uh, actually does have pretty good coffee. And in case you were looking for some kind of spa, well, they have a dental spa. Not bad, but not exactly air venom. Moving on. There's a lovely curio shop, in case we hadn't bought enough silks or statues. We have a plethora of awesome sculptures down this side, but that brings you to an audio-visual theater. And we're only halfway down this. It keeps going to a theater which I'm pretty sure is where we wind up getting to see some pretty cool cultural shows. And a martial arts studio. I know pretty much every culture says that their martial art is the one that invented all other martial arts, but Buddhist monks learned martial arts from here. So they might actually be right in India. Which brings us to a yoga square. And if you're not out of breath yet, our actual guest room. Which is actually pretty nice. After a nice day of settling into our hotel in Fort Cochin, it's time to crash because we're getting up early in the morning for good old fashioned Kerala yoga. remember we ate pretty well in Jaipur. That was an amazing meal. And you know what? Two nights ago, our first meal in Kerala was also incredible. But we just cannot stop talking about last night's Those prawns. Cons. It is pretty much the best thing I've had in India. And it, it had no curry, no cumin, none of the None of the standard staples of what we were expecting from food in India. Yeah, but. It was, yeah, it was very unexpected. It was very unexpected and the best thing I've had. <laughs>